Hello friends, in this video we are going to discuss about the limitations of auditing. So, truly speaking that an audit should have no limitations of its own. But it is uh, as it is designed to protect the interest of all parties who are interested in the affairs of the business. If there be any shortcoming arising therefrom, it may be due to its narrow scope of application in its related field of operation and unextended definition of the concept. So, as we know that auditing is done in order to protect the interest of the uh, investors and also the business or businessmen. So, auditing, the process of auditing itself is not having any limitation but uh, as we all know that we the human beings are behind all the activities so the limitation of auditing will be based on uh, such type of uh, activities which is done by the human being only so let us uh, discuss what are the shortcomings or what are the limitations of auditing and first and foremost is that uh, we want a want of complete picture that means audit may not give complete picture if the accounts are prepared with the intention to detect frauds audit may be may not be able to detect them that means if um, the person who is preparing the books of account and also the person who is doing the auditing work is engaged in some fraudulent activities then it may not give some complete picture. If the person who is doing fraud and also the auditor who is coming for auditing is having a tie-up, uh, tie then we cannot say that audit, um, audit will be giving a complete picture regarding the uh, works audited. Okay, and uh, next is the problem of dependence. Sometimes the auditor has to depend on explanations, clarifications and informations from staff and the client. He, if mm, he, he is not getting correct or complete information from them, then auditing, uh, auditing becomes useless. Okay, so mm, the problem of dependence is another one limitation of auditing. That is, uh, if they are doing the auditing work, they will be... Mm, they, there will be a need of getting clarifications or any explanations or any uh, information regarding the transactions that is being done in the books of account. The transaction or the explanation, clarification or information that may be, uh, that should be from the staff or the client of a particular business organization. If they are not giving the correct and complete information, obviously we can say that uh, audit will not be done in a proper manner. So this is one of the limitation of audit. And next is post-mortem examination. As we know that uh, in accounts itself we are recording the historical transaction. So that after a transaction is happening it is recorded in the books of account and at the end of the financial year uh, the profit and loss account and balance sheet and, uh, is prepared and also the auditing may, most of the companies are doing auditing work at the end of the financial year only. So uh, we can uh, surely say that it is a post-mortem examination. So um, there is no use of such examination when events are already been occurred. Okay. So if some events are occurred and after doing the after the occurrence of that event, event only, we are doing the examination. If such uh, sometimes if it is not giving true and fair value or fair view, then we can say that auditing will become an utter blood will be a blunder. Okay. So post-mortem examination is one of the limitation of auditing. And next is existence of errors in the audited accounts. So if it is not possible for the auditor uh, to check each and every transaction in the organization, 
Sometimes there may be existence in the audit, uh, existence of errors in the audited accounts also. So as a result, there may be error in the audited accounts even after checking by the auditor. Okay, so as we all know that uh, the auditor, the uh, person who is doing auditing is also a human being. So um, there is a thanks for uh, doing mistakes. So if it is not possible, uh, and also we can say that it is not possible for the auditor to check each and every case. Sometimes they will also do test checking. So if the transaction in which they have done the test checking is done correctly, and the mistakes may be in some other transaction, so we cannot blame the auditor also. So it is not possible for him to audit each and every transaction. A number of transaction will be taken place in the business organization. It is not possible for the auditor to verify each and every transaction simple transaction so they will be applying test checking and all and if it is not working properly then it will also be a limitation of auditing and the next one is lack of expertise so oh, uh, we know that if a person is we have to appoint the auditor uh, who is expertise in auditing field. The auditor has to seek opinion for, of experts on certain matters on which he may not have expert knowledge. The auditor has to depend upon such reports which may not always be correct. Okay, so um, if a person who is doing auditing in a particular business organization should be an expert in that field okay so if it is if he is not expertise sometimes he may be having some dilemma or some uh, confusions regarding the transaction that is written in the book of account so uh, if he he is not aware about that then he have to seek the uh, seek, uh, information or clarifications from the experts also so if he is doing is not doing like that it may uh, lead to a uh, limitation in auditing so the, um, and also the auditor has to depend on uh, reports which may not always be correct sometimes as we know that we are human beings are um, more in more intelligent and also they are uh, sometimes they will be uh, intentionally creating frauds which cannot be identified even by the auditor okay so in all these cases it is a limitation of auditing lack of expertise is also one of the limitation of auditing and next is diversified situation so uh, or as we uh, learned earlier there are different kinds of auditing auditing is done in different situations also so um, auditing is considered to be mechanical work uh, and auditor may not be in a position to frame uh, audit program which can be followed in all situations. So if, if he is doing auditing in different situations, different audit program should be prepared. If he is preparing an, an audit program and if he is practicing that audit program in every institution, it may not be possible. So he should prepare um, different uh, audit programs for different institutions and different situations. So diversified situation is another one limitation of auditing and next is quality of the auditor as uh, we know that um, the person who is doing auditing should be qualified person so success of the audit depends upon the sincerity with which the auditor has to uh, auditor has performed his duties the same audit work can be done by two different authorities with difference in sincerity okay so uh, if we are appointing an auditor he should be a sincere person the auditor who is being appointed for doing audit work should be a sincere person only a sincere person can do uh, auditing work properly so um, uh, the person who is appointed as an auditor should be a um, uh, qualified person he should be having sufficient quality to do the auditing work in case of knowledge as well as in case of sincerity also so these are some of the limitations of uh, auditing hope you all have understood the first one is uh, Sometimes he may fail to give a complete picture regarding the auditing work. Then problem of dependence is there. That is one of the limitation. Post-mortem examination is being done. 
that is another one limitation existence of errors in the audited words by mistake that is also um, or unknowingly if some errors may happen that is also a limitation and lack of expertise knowledge or expert knowledge is another one limitation diversified situation for different situation different approaches should be taken that is another one limitation and also the quality of the auditor he should the auditor should be qualified uh, in case of knowledge and also in case of sincerity thank you